Welcome to Jesus Loves the World podcast. For more information and free resources, visit our website, jesuslovestheworld.info. Be blessed, empowered, and transformed in Jesus' name. When Jesus walked the earth as a man, he had compassion for the people. He lived amongst the people and journeyed with them. As God who became flesh and dwelt amongst us, he knew the secrets of each one's heart. He loved them unconditionally and poured all of himself out for them. Jesus experienced the full human condition, spoke light into the darkness, brought healing into sickness and hope into hopelessness. He did all this so we could believe in him and receive all of what he has done for us. All this because God so loves. Today, as we live in this fast-paced world that is damaged by evil, let us go back to the time when Jesus walked the earth as a man. It was festival time, a feast of the Jews. In Jerusalem, their holy city where they would gather, there was a pool by the sheep gate. At the time, it was believed that an angel would come down and stir up the water and that whoever was first to step into the water having the water been stirred up was healed. So by the water lay a great multitude of sick people, with those who were blind, lame and paralysed. They were watching, waiting, hoping. At this time Jesus was coming to the temple, where the devotees of God would gather. So many people were there. In amongst the crowd of devotees, Jesus looked to the multitudes of sick people and he sees the one. A man, an outcast, who is suffering from an infirmity. He is at the mercy of the people who had cast him out. He was hopeless and all alone. So let's pick up the story. In John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The first thing we learn about Jesus from the text is that Jesus sees. Jesus sees the man's need and gives the man respect by acknowledging his existence and engaging in conversation with him. In the culture of the time, this in itself was an extraordinary act. Day after day, people would walk past the man and ignore him, be disrespectful in ignoring him, not even acknowledge his existence as a person. Yet Jesus, the Son of God, God himself who became flesh and blood, who created the heavens and earth and all things good, acknowledged the man and gave him respect. So we learn from the text that Jesus sees. The second thing we learn about Jesus from the text is that Jesus knows. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God who became flesh and he knows all things. He knew the man had been in such a helpless condition for a very, very long time. Jesus also knew the culture of the time and how this man was an outcast oppressed, and trapped in an existence without hope. Jesus knows that when a person has lost all hope, as a result of circumstances or how they've been treated by another, a darkness can overwhelm the mind. A darkness that is so oppressive, it becomes depressive. It is a darkness of the mind that is so dark it can literally be felt. It carries thoughts of self-harm, unworthiness, heaviness, sorrow, 
and is almost unbearable pain. Yet Jesus, who knows and sees all things, responds by speaking hope into the man's mind. He asks, Do you want to get well? By asking the question, Do you want to get well? Jesus is giving the man hope, speaking light into the man's darkness. He is opening up the man's thoughts to the possibility of becoming well, a possibility that had been taken from him. Jesus knows and understands the man's physical condition and his mental condition. Jesus knows. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Remarkably, this man did not even know Jesus, yet he did just that. He immediately received his healing. The text is not about the man's relationship with Jesus, as he did not even know Jesus. It is not about the man's weaknesses, as Jesus is stronger. It's not about the man's desire to get well, because Jesus' desire to heal him is greater. As for the man's lack of faith, Jesus is greater. It's all about Jesus, seeing the man's condition, knowing the man's thinking. Jesus heals. Physically, the man had been sick so many years that mentally the hope of getting well had been taken from his life. Culturally, he was just existing. He had no hope and a darkness overwhelmed. Spiritually, he did not know his creator. He did not know that his creator loves him and wants to bring hope and healing into his life, in this life and the next. After the man had received his healing, he came to know the one who spoke hope and healing into his situation. The man, as a result of his healing, testifies that Jesus heals physically, mentally, spiritually. Yet not everyone was happy about the truth that Jesus sees, Jesus knows, and Jesus heals. Let us continue on and see what the religious said about this matter. John chapter 5, verses 10 to 15. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who has healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Jesus the Son of God, has revealed the heart of God the Father in heaven. He came to give hope to the hopeless, healing to the broken, love to the rejected. He came and spoke light into the darkness and to give life eternal. Jesus, the Son of God, revealed that all power and authority belongs to him. His kingdom is a kingdom of hope, healing, love, light, and life everlasting. Yet the kingdom of God causes confrontation to those who refuse to receive and believe in him. Sadly, there are those who knowingly choose the darkness, even after experiencing the true light in Jesus they still refuse to receive him as their saviour and king, therefore denying their only pathway to salvation. 
The religious leaders of the day when Jesus healed this man did not want to give up their earthly power of control over people. They did not want to enter into the light, and more sinisterly, they tried to prevent others from entering into the light. They knowingly chose to reject Jesus. There can be many things that can block us from receiving healing from Jesus. Just like a hose connected to a full tank of water, where the tap is continually turned on, if there's a blockage in the hose, then the end result will be that no water pours into the tree. The good news is, Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater than any blockage, mentally, Jesus is greater than any blockage physically, and Jesus is greater than any blockage spiritually, as Jesus is greater. Jesus sees our situation, our needs, our sorrow and our pain. Jesus knows all things. He knows those who will come to him and those who will forever reject him. Yet the truth remains. Jesus heals, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Fast forward to our time now. Let me introduce you to a man named Krishna. He is a well-respected man within a well-off community. He has a government job and good security, yet he is experiencing trouble in his body. His heart is palpitating. His body is under attack. Krishna has his gods, his lucky charms, his superstitions, yet they do not provide him with any deliverance. One cold, damp, dark night, Krishna walks into a five-star hotel. That night there is a gathering for a celebration service. He has been this way before. A pastor comes and prays for him, and another pastor comes and prays. He feels nothing. Every time he goes home empty, yet he still comes. He walked into the room. He senses tonight something is different. From the middle of the room he observes a crowd that has gathered at the back. Something seems to be happening. Are they praying? Getting closer, Krishna sees a woman from a distant land. He's never seen her here before. And there's a man in the centre of the group. This woman from a distant land is praying over the man and starts telling everyone, including the man, Praise Jesus! Let's praise Jesus! Praise his mighty name! The man becomes overwhelmed. Krishna thinks, What is this? The pastor turns her eyes to Krishna and tells the woman from a distant land to go over and pray for him. The woman from a distant land walks over to Krishna. To his surprise, the woman asks the most extraordinary question. If Jesus was standing in front of you and asked you, What is it that you want of me? What would it be? He replied, I am of another faith. The woman smiles and asks the question again. Krishna responds not to the question but states, I am not ready for Jesus to be my God. The woman smiles and asks again. It becomes evident to Krishna, usually a quiet man, that this woman understands him and has compassion for his situation. Krishna opens up and shares his story. My sister wants me dead. She wants my property. She has put a curse on my body. My heart is palpitating. My body is in need of healing and deliverance. You can pray if you must. The woman responded, I don't need to pray for you. The question is, do you want me to pray for you? If so, you need to know that I will pray in the name of Jesus. No one had ever said such things to Krishna before. Compelled, 
he humbly inquires, Can Jesus heal me? The woman testifies, Absolutely. Only Jesus has defeated the evil spirits and all curses on the cross. Only Jesus can heal you. Only he. Amongst all the noisy celebrations, music and multiple conversations, there is this moment. It's as if time had stood still. Krishna softly says, Please pray for my healing and deliverance from this evil curse that has been put on my body by my sister. The woman from the distant land prays. After the prayer, Krishna stands motionless with his eyes wide open. He whispers, I felt a peace flow through my body. Tell me, please tell me, what is this power? The woman looks directly into Krishna's eyes and says, Your body has experienced Jesus. It is his power. That night, another heart experienced the love, truth and power of the living God. He did not know Jesus nor wanted to receive him, yet Jesus sees him, knows his need and heals him. The woman from the distant land concludes, Only Jesus can bring peace and deliverance to a body that is yet to receive him. Only he. Now is the time for us to let go of all barriers and let go of all religious thinking that is blocking people from receiving from Jesus and experiencing the living God. This is the heartbeat of God the Father, that no one should perish and that his people Remove the blockages and let all who are willing come to Jesus and receive hope and healing from him. Jesus sees. Jesus knows. Jesus heals. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that because you so love you sent your Son into this world damaged by evil. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. That Jesus sees our need, knows our pain and heals accordingly. We thank you that no matter where we are in this life journey, we can come to you and receive. We thank you that Jesus, you are greater than all things, including our weaknesses, including our strengths, including our circumstances and whatever level of faith we may or may not have. Jesus, you are greater. So in the name of Jesus, by your Spirit, Lord, let us take up our mat, rise up, and walk. And we just surrender all sickness to you, all the pain, all the sorrow of this life, and take a moment to receive from you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For more information and free resources, visit our website, jesuslovestheworld.info. Be blessed, empowered, and transformed in Jesus' name.